Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, and with me as always, my co-host, Nick Mason. And I also welcome you to the podcast. Oh, wow. It's very zen of you. (laughs) I know you're not like that, though. You're weirdly aggressive. It's not true. It is true. I'll kill you. It is true. I'll kill you. (laughs) I'll lay you. I don't even care. Great. This is going to work out really well for us. This is a legally binding contract, too. I agree. Yeah. Um, so the theme song has slightly changed. We'll talk about it more towards the end of the show. Wow, people Ga- will be on tenterhooks. No doubt. Gabriel Tice Bruton uh, uh, did the original one and, and a new one. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it, Mason. Don't even worry about it. Because this week, of course, it's, it's a big time to talk about uh, Matthew Vaughan. From the twisted mind of Matthew Vaughan. So twisted. His new film, Argyle. Mm. But before we get there, of course, we've got the news of the week. We've got the passing of Carl Weathers. Boo, Boo. by the way. Mm-hmm. Hate that news. I hate don't, it also. Don't like reporting that. Uh, we're going to talk about 28 Years Later, mm. the sequel to 28 Weeks Later, which is a sequel to 28 Days Later. Oh, yeah. We've got a new Supergirl. Huh? Oh, that's what we do. It's Australia's own. That's right. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League, the video game, about how it's bad and everyone hates it. And neither of us have played it, correct? No, that's true. Okay, so maybe okay. it's great. Trailers Ahoy for Ghostbusters. Monkey Man and the Minister of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Mm. Then we've got a big... Sp- the Ministry, not the Minister. It's not about a guy. Oh, yeah. Minister. It's Did not about say? bloody bloody uh, making resolutions in Parliament. Amen, brother. Although it'd be nice if they, some of them bloody did, those clowns in Parliament. But they were good resolutions. They were good ones, though. Yeah, for nice. once, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we've got Big Spum News, which is the Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel movies. Right. <laughs> we're talking Spider-Man 4. We're talking Craven the Hunter. We're talking Madame Web. All of these things we're going mm. to be covering. I have in my notes here uh, Dakota Johnson news brackets assorted. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She's said some stuff. She's done some stuff. Normal stuff. Normal stuff. I think rational stuff given the circumstances. Totally. That you found yourself in a in a Sony Marvel movie. You found yourself in it, yeah. Uh, you woke up and you're like, ah. <laughs> oh, no, what? Oh, oh, oh. You're on a couch or whatever and you're like, what, what's happened? Oh, <laughs> there's an up, overturned script and there's <laughs> – I've got a – I'm wearing a costume with – too many lines on it. What happened? <laughs> Where am I? I'll just have a look at the script. Oh, no. Oh, a three-movie deal that won't happen. Oh, no, there's no. 17 writers on this. Why? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happens to all of us? Oh, no, I'm not even on a couch. I'm on a green screen. <laughs> the screen is in. So, yeah, there's time codes below. Mm. Uh, Rob Colleagues who edits this is always kind enough to do that. That's right. Let's kick things off with this. In terrible news... Uh, Carl Weathers has passed away at age 76. Uh, all we know at the moment is, according to his family, he died peacefully in his sleep. Well, that's good. Small blessings, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, people would be familiar with Carl Weathers, but just to name a few of the roles that he has played. Go on. Apollo Creed. In Legendary. A bun- in one to four of the Rocky movies. Iconic. Amazing. Uh, he's Dylan in the pre- in Predator. Not the Predator. He would never. <laughs> would never. That's true, yeah. In Predator. In original. Predator. They've got that iconic handshake. Yeah, and then he gets his arm plasma gunned off. That's right. Yeah. Speaking and of. his gun keeps firing. Gah, 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 it gah. does. Yeah. Uh, Chubbs in Happy Gilmore, also missing an arm or hand. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Comedic role. Well, speaking of, he plays himself in Arrested Development. Yes, he does. That's right. To great effect. So, I mean, what you learn uh, about, you know, going over his career, it's not, you know, he hasn't, he hasn't had as many leading roles as some people in Hollywood, but every single one of these iconic. Yep. You know, oftentimes people talk about what's a, what's an actor that appears in stuff and and any time they pop up you're like, "Yes. Yep. This is going to be improved." Grief Carger in The Mandalorian. Yes, Mando. He also directed some episodes yeah, of The Mandalorian. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, a bunch, like there's there's so many stories about this sort of stuff. Apparently, John McTiernan got Carl Weathers in for for Predator because mm. Like Arnold, he had like a sports background because he was in the NFL and, you know, he's also like a, you know, a a huge guy who works hard on that look and he's like, well, Arnold just sort of starting his acting career and, you know, he needs someone to model good acting on and like a lot of... A lot of stars, you know, in a, in a movie like that will just do their lines and then go back to their trailer. But apparently, like, Arnold was sort of transfixed on Carl Weathers as like, right, oh, yeah. this is how you do it kind yeah. of thing. This is how you go from sports and and, and that to acting. And, he like, here's how you move and as a big guy on screen and kind of thing. And that's, yeah. you know, so that's that was, you know, Carl Weathers is sort of, you know, some of the grounding for Arnold's biggest work kind of thing. I'd believe it. And also, um, speaking of Arrested Development, I don't, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Mitch Hurwitz, who created Arrested Development, was like, we need a guy to contrast against David Cross as Tobias. Yeah. And we want to do like – and he, he mentioned – before he got cast in the show, there's a mention of he 
Tobias did one of Carl Weathers' courses. I can't remember what it was for. Maybe it was public speaking or something like that. But I, but the idea was we'll bring Carl Weathers in and we do like a Rocky-style montage where they're running on the beach kind of thing. Right. And so he called up Carl Weathers and he's like, we, we would love to get you on and work with David Cross. And Carl Weathers is like, it's not going to be a bunch of Rocky stuff, is it? <laughs> and Mitch Elwitz is like, no, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't know. Why would it be that? Rip. And, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Weathers is like, because, you know, I direct and I do all this sort of stuff mm. and, you know, what if I had some comedic stuff to do? What about this? What if my char- What if I play myself and my character is I'm really, really cheap? Because <laughs> yeah, he keeps, keeps giving advice for how to get a stew going. Yeah, he's like, baby, you got a stew going. There's, a, there's also a moment, uh, there's a moment where there's, a, there's an incident at a restaurant and everybody's been horrifically injured and all this sort of stuff and Carl Weathers is just out the front and he's got all his leftovers in one of those foil swans and he's like, yeah, I've been, I've been badly traumatized and I'm, I'm a... I need compensation kind of thing. Still, <laughs> doing an interview to camera. Amazing. Anyway, love, love, love Carl Weathers. Yeah. It was Action Jackson, of course. You yeah. Movie Action Never Jackson. seen that, but yes. No, it's good. Um, so the video game Mercenaries Playground of Destruction yes. is an incredible like open world kind of – the, the guys who made the original Battlefront games. Oh, right. And Carl Weathers' vo- voice is one of the three protagonists in that, one of the three you can pick who's great. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just – yeah, this one kind of su- surprised me because, yep. you know, by all accounts he seemed, you know, happy and healthy and popping mm. up in things and doing action sequences still and all of that and directing. So, yeah, this really sucks. I, I just saw this on Twitter. Do you mean X? No, absolutely not. Uh, this is a tweet from Ian Milham who works uh, with uh, ILM, VFX. Mm. So he was on, you know, a, a bunch of stuff for The Mandalorian. And he says, I was in the food line on Mando season one and on the dessert table they had ice cream and also some cookies. I decided to freestyle and put a scoop between some cookies. Just as I made my creation, a booming joyful voice called out behind me. I turned around. It was Apollo Creed himself. He bellowed, ice cream sandwich. (laughs) He winked his approval at me. I floated for the rest of the day. No doubt. I think that's great. Oh, I think about that for the rest of my right? life every day, every yeah. goddamn day. Um, there's a bunch of really good tributes out there, including the ice cream sandwich one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stallone did a really good one on his Instagram. People wanted to check that out as well. Yep. Yeah, because and he's in front of that iconic Rocky three painting. Yeah, uh, yeah, which is yeah. And I, you know, and and the, the reason that you know that series is such a smash hit is because it's an iconic protagonist and it's an iconic, yeah. not a villain, but just a, no, you know, you see him develop over the movies as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, which is a credit to the writing, That's I guess, right. also, yeah. But you know, who writes anything really? And then they punched each other. And they maybe. punched each other right at the end. Yeah, man, absolutely. You know, we've got to move it along, but terrible news, mm. um, but amazing person and body of work. That's right. Yeah, it's via THR. 28 years later is happening, Mason, at Sony. After a furious bidding war, you might have been hearing the rumours and the rumblings. I so, haven't. So but there, there was. So Danny Boyle uh, directed. <laughs> a thing that already exists, yeah, another one? We'll yeah, do it. Yep, we'll yep. do it. So before there was Fast Zombies in Dawn of the Dead 2004, there was mm-hmm. Fast Zombies. They're not technically zombies, and it's a rage virus, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in Danny Boyle's 28 Days Later, which That's was written right. by Alex Garland, who people might, might know from Ex Machina, and he's gone on to direct a bunch of movies. But he wrote a lot of Danny Boyle's stuff, including yeah, right. your favorite movie, the movie Sunshine. So it looks as if, well, not looks as if, it's happening. Both Danny Boyle and Alex Garland are directing, returning as writer and director. But they've switched. No, Mason, oh. they've not switched. Well, not for no. this one at least. So not this... even for fun? No, 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 no. Not no. even for one scene? They don't do jokes. Not even Quentin Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez style? They're going to no. switch for a no. scene? Oh, okay. oh, by the way, um, we recently did a commentary on the first one of this. That's right. 28 Days Later, it's on BigSandwich.co. Mm-hmm. But um, So the sequel is part of a package uh, that includes a sequel film. So there's other things going on there. Like They might try to franchise this out. Multimedia, I like it. That's right. However, Boyle will only direct the first project with its sequel to be directed by a yet as of unknown director. Could be us. Could be us. The other thing is, so there was, a, there was talk of this like a decade ago where they were going to make 28 months later. That's right. But now it's nearly been... Yeah. 28 years. So if they miss this window, it's going to have to be 28 decades later. And that's too long. It's that's too long. way too long, isn't it's it? way too long. I think all the zombies will be dead by yeah, then. Yeah, they'll all be dead by then. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I, look, if you haven't seen those movies, in particular the first one, they're well worth checking out. They star, well, the first one does, Kill, uh, Killian Murphy. Jeremy Renner's in the second one, oh. inexplicably. Oh. But So Killian Murphy is also going to produce, which and there's speculation that he could return yeah. to the zombie universe. That's right. Not to spoil, I guess, the fact that he doesn't die in that first movie. Sure. Mm-hmm. But he nearly did. There was a deleted scene where he did die, Mason, oh. but he didn't. Good movie. There's a, that, Horrifying. That, that's, I feel like that's a fairly common 
thing in zombie media is there's always a deleted scene where the, the main characters either die or didn't die, like mm. whatever the opposite happened in the movie. There's, sure, the, yeah. there's a version where they're like, do we do the bleak one? Yeah. Do we do the bleak one? Do we do the bleak one or the extra bleak one? Mm. Because you know? <laughs> we could do the one where he dies or we could do the one where he's the only one who's still alive. <laughs> Just a thought. We could do that one. He's all alone in the world. You could do both. Way worse than death. You ah, could do both. You could do both. We could do both. Sometimes they do both. That's true. So yeah, I'm very excited for this, but I just didn't think it had happened. Mm. I just didn't think. I mean, I didn't think Train Spotting Two would happen with Danny Boyle, and that ended up going ahead, That's didn't true. it? But they didn't call it Porno, which Train Spotting Two, the book is called. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, which is confusing for me when I was going into the movies, and it wasn't called Porno. Excuse me, one ticket for Porno, please. <laughs> one ticket for Porno. Haven't people been coming in all week and asking for tickets to Porno? <laughs> Specifically, one ticket. <laughs> So Mason, in casting news, has been confirmed that Millie Alcock is Supergirl slash Kara Zor-El, who is the younger cousin of Superman. That's right. Uh, though not initially. So explain Supergirl, go. So the premise is that, of course, uh, Superman uh, was was shot to Earth from Krypton in his little rocket, yep. little rocket ship. and Sometimes uh, with a dog and a monkey and other things. That's exactly right. Another family on Krypton. The cousins were like, hey, let's send Supergirl, who's like already a grown-up teenage girl, in her rocket and she can show up first. Yeah. And she will uh she will she will look after baby Kalel, but then due to, you know, time dilation or space fog or whatever. One of them went through a wormhole. Yeah, wormhole, it's probably a wormhole. Uh he arrives first and grows up into Superman, and then she arrives, but she's still a girl. Yep. So the old switcheroo. Absolutely. Now people might know her. She's Australian. That's right. From a recent Game of Thrones. She's also in um, a TV series Upright, which is a great Australian series with Tim Minchin also. I've only uh-huh. seen the first series, uh, okay. which I really enjoyed. I haven't seen season two. All right. I like her a lot. I think this is a, a great choice. I think she's going to nail this. Right, love that. Um, even though we just had a Supergirl who I also like. Yeah. But that <laughs> one about Carl, yeah. yeah. She's stuck in the, in the Ezra Miller slash Michael <laughs> Keaton slash... George Clooney universe. The bleak ending. The bleak ending, that's all right. <laughs> should, we have a, should we have a bleak ending where she's constantly being killed or should we have the even bleaker ending where she's alive <laughs> but she's stuck in the, the old DC Flash universe? I think initially, because we don't see her come back. She just disappears, doesn't she? I think so, yeah. But I think what, they did shoot some stuff where she was alive. That Great. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter, does it? But I understand why they want to get away from that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I think if that movie had have done well, this wouldn't have happened. Also, they can bring her back. That's true. Yeah. So this is via James Gunn on Threads, which is his exclusive social media platform. Mm. We've talked about this. Zach Scott Snyder has Vero. Yep. James Gunn has Threads. I've all got one. Strangely, Millie was the first person I brought up to Peter for the role well over a year ago when I only had read the comics. I was watching House of the Dragon and thought she might have the edge, grace and authenticity we needed for DC Supergirl. And here Sounds we like now. the laziest casting ever. Yeah, I was on the couch. I, I was watching show. TV. I was watching I was one of the most comic. popular shows. Yeah, I and just... I saw one of the two people in it, the lead ones. I don't remember I said blonde. <laughs> And that'll do. And I didn't call Peter Saffron, but he called me. So I yeah. picked up. I wouldn't have called. I wouldn't have. But he, then he rang. I got rang. it. He called and I wasn't going to pick up. But then I was reaching for chips. <laughs> and I accident. And I'm like, oh, it's too late to hang up. And he said, you got you got any casting? And I went, oh, blonde. <laughs> and he knew what I meant. <laughs> he was watching it too. Yeah. So he's also said this before. So Supergirl is also based off Woman of Tomorrow, yes. which is Tom King's story uh, line from 2021, mm-hmm. which is great if you haven't read it. I have read it. So well, shut up. So basically we see the <laughs> difference. He's saying that we see the difference between Superman who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents uh-huh. from the time he was an infant versus Supergirl who was raised on a rock. Who's kind of a jerk. Yeah, a, a chip off Krypton and watched everyone around her die and be killed in terrible ways for the first 14 years of her life. Then she comes to Earth when she was a young girl and she's much more hardcore, not exactly the Supergirl we're used to meeting. So she was kind of like naive and whatever in that Supergirl movie. Mm. Um, and then there was obviously the TV show, which I didn't see a lot of, but people seem to like or not like. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I like um, Melissa Benoist though. But this is going to be closer to what the current comic book version is and not the one where she's a, a weird white goo person. Yeah, that's right. Which is also a version of this. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. The 90s version. Don't worry about it. You worry about it a little bit. Yeah. There was a moment where in, in DC Comics where they're like, there can only be one Kryptonian. But then they were like, yeah, but we like all the other Kryptonians, but we just said yeah. they won't because it's, it's, it's co- too complicated. If there's an entire city of other Kryptonians, they could just show up and solve everybody's problems exactly. immediately. So we can't do that, but we, do, we would like to have a Supergirl. Yeah. So what if she was goo? What if she was goo? You know? She's a goo woman. Mm. Super goo. She's also more kind of like space savvy than Superman is, initially yes. at least, because she spent a lot of time like yeah. just milling Spacing about. Spacing around, yeah. Spacing around, yeah. 
Anyways, speaking of a lot of time, spending a lot of time doing a thing. <laughs> suicide. Oh no, no, no! This that's we got to celebrate. That's one of the best segues that anyone's ever done. <laughs> Might be right. Yeah. Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. Uh, the game, as I mentioned, uh, it's bad, and everyone seems to hate it. Allegedly. Uh, allegedly. Now uh, they didn't give out review codes to any of the major outlets. Not even was, IGN. No. Uh, could they wrote a scathing? preview thing okay, which was right. like I played this and it, the headline was like I played this and it was bad right they're doing some mean stuff at the moment IG and I'm really enjoying it we'll talk about one later <laughs> okay but um some people though I should point out like elements of it like some people like the gameplay side of thing and the shooting mechanics and some of the traversal because all the, the four characters if you don't know there's your four you play one or four Suicide Squad characters it's like King Shot, Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, Deadshot it's set in the Arkham universe of the games. Uh-huh. Um, the Justice League turn, turn bad and you're task forced mm. with killing Well, them. they're, they're mind-controlled by Brainiac. Yes. They don't just turn bad on their own. No, uh, yeah. but the things that people have been saying. None of them are like, hey, wait a second, we've got all kinds of crazy superpowers. We should rob banks. Let's shoot lasers at everyone. Let's do it. Let's do it. So people are saying uh, it's a buggy launch, lackluster <laughs> gameplay loop. Disrespectful was the word I saw well, thrown speak, around. Well, let's go through this in order. So speaking of buggy apparently there was a bug on launch where if you you pre-ordered it Mm -hmm. you got it before everybody else as soon as you booted up the game it went into like the completed game state awesome so just easy so yeah exactly so like when you finish one of these games and you can just kind of free roam around everywhere you yeah. just got that. Yeah. So that's cool. So everybody who paid extra to, to play it earlier. Got to see the ending. Just got to see the, yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Um, some people are like saying some of the story elements are good in themselves, like the interactions between yeah. the different characters. Well, I've seen some but... cutscenes and I, I've seen some cutscenes and I think it's pretty funny. Yeah. Some there's, of a, the... there's a moment where uh, there's a, there was a particular cutscene where um, Deadshot takes a, he's about to take a shot at uh, the Flash and he's having an argument with Boomerang who's like, why don't you just post him the bullet? He's the Flash, whatever. <laughs> and so Deadshot's like, no, I got this, and he shoots the round at him. And then you just see Flash is like zip around behind him, and he's like, why didn't you just mail me the bullet? <laughs> and Boomerang's like, yeah. Like, and I like the fact that like, they, they clearly know each other. Yeah. And also he said post because he's Australian. He's Australian. Yeah. And there's the little details. Little details. But some of the things that people are saying, and we're going to go into some spoilers here. There's yeah. time codes if you do Bearing in mind, we haven't. We haven't played no, it. No, and I'm not but going this, to. This has been unavoidable. And and also I just want to point out this is not on the developers that I don't like this kind of thing. Warner Brothers clearly went, make a looter shooter that goes on forever mm. with an infinite gameplay loop where um, all the characters, you can kill them, but then they come back in DLC or whatever. Yeah, and also I, I was reading something about this that apparently now this is this is intended to be the mindset because it's perceived that gamers are like, well, if you don't give us a live service thing, it's like you're abandoning the game. Yeah. You know, whereas that's what people used to do with games. I like to play a game and then not play it. Yeah, the game came out and you're like, cool, and you played it until it was finished and you went, good experience, and then maybe some later they released a new episode or a bonus expansion pack or I or play it again in 10 years But now people are like, well, it has to come out and then like a few weeks later you get a new thing and a new thing and a new thing. No. Yeah. I don't want that. Ever. I don't want it, but some people do apparently. Not, I don't know if they do. Um, uh, depending on what it is, I guess. Yeah. I think there's games that are built specifically for that, like your Fortnites, mm, yeah, yeah. like your other ones that are like into that. Fortnite Where, like, clones. It's yeah. an ongoing kind of situation with new chapters and gear and whatever. Like, sure, sure, I think sure. that's suit. But like this, this is from a studio that exclusively made single player. Like video games where you were Batman and you beat up a bunch of people. There's a big storyline and then it ends. Yeah. And then this is like what they did here mm-hmm. when they could have just made a Superman game or even a Suicide Squad game, yes. but, a, but a good one that people liked. So, like all the old games they made that people liked. Exactly. Like yeah. do it, they could have even done it in the style of Guardians of the Galaxy where you only play as one of the characters, but there's a storyline that you go through and whatever and you just speak to your teammates and whatever. Sure. Like that would have been infinitely better than this and also easier to make. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so all the source, all the you kill all the Justice League, and a lot of it is we found a particular bullet. And now we can shoot Superman. Nice. So you're just machine gunning Superman for ten minutes in an arena or whatever. Mm-hmm, sure. Um, Batman, Kevin Conroy's Batman. Yes. is shot in the head by Harley Quinn. Is he though? Well, here's the other thing. <laughs> so what they seemingly want to do because first of all, James, everybody's like, this is a really disrespectful to, to Batman way to go out or whatever. First of all, you don't see the bullet go through his head and out the other side, so he didn't die. Yeah. And, and even if he and did. And even if he did, he's been dead before. And it's they, they'll just find another way to bring him back. I mean, the only reason people were upset, I think, really, is because it was thought that this was his last performance, right, uh-huh. which isn't actually true, and we'll talk about mm. talk about that. But um, but but yeah, it's 
because they want to bring them back in DLC, like Batman's back and whatever, Superman's back and this and what and that, sure. etc. Um, which who knows how much of that is actually going to come out because this is not doing particularly right, yeah. well. Sure. So but anyway, Bat- Kevin Conroy was rumored to appear in the next series, Batman Caped Crusader, which is kind of like a reimagining of Batman yeah. the Animated Series. In some role, so maybe yeah. not necessarily Batman. But apparently that's not true. Oh. But he is going to appear in Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 3 oh. as the Batman the Animated Series version. So it looks as if... That might be the last appearance, sure, which sure, is a, sure. a good way to end. Absolutely. Look, I think also, let's say, again, I haven't even played this. Maybe I would love it. I definitely wouldn't, but I, and I'm <laughs> never going to play it because I don't encourage uh-huh. this kind of shit, Mason. Would you watch all the cut scenes put together on YouTube? I'd watch some of them, and I have. Love that. Uh, whereas I don't think this kind of tarnishes his legacy. Like, no. it's kind of like, I could see where he'd be like, well, this is a bad way to end things. I understand that, but, but I could also his see, body of work Yeah, but I could also see this. that if they pitched him, hey, how about a version of your character where, you know, it's you do the voice, but you're an evil version, and et cetera. I think he might be like, that sounds like fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyways, um, are you going to buy it? No. Because it doesn't look good? And I don't have a PS5. Oh. But if you did? Probably not. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> um, trailers ahoy <laughs> Ghostbusters new Ghostbusters God it's called that got a new trailer it did I gotta say yes as, as a, the number one Ghostbusters hater on the internet that's me proud of it yeah yeah it looks okay it I actually think so looks too, like yeah. there's some fun stuff in this yeah we're getting, we, we got some um, and then they're like the librarian's back great good love it <laughs> Slime is back is he good he is it's true that's great Kumail Nanjiani's back oh my god there's just really lo- like just lovingly like <laughs> Courteous and beautiful shots of the original Ghostbusters, you know. You better believe it. Just showing is. them in all their glory. Mm. Just, just they're grubs. Film them like grubs. <laughs> That's right. Swimming in muck. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> It's where they belong. Uh, yeah, it looks, looks fun. Yeah, we got some you know new shots. Janine's there. Janine's Walter there. Peck is back. Yeah, man. The I EPA like that. Guy. He's the man now or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's okay. fine. I'm, I'm going to be there day one, James. I don't even care what you say. I'm going to have to be there also. That's right, day, day one. Day one. Why not embrace it then, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Just learn to love Ghostbusters in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to learn to love it, Mason. Too bad. It's, I'm excited. Yeah. And hopefully it'll be really hot in Melbourne as well. So. Oh, God, I can't wait for it to be extraordinarily hot again. Yeah. We also got a trailer for Monkey Man, mm. which is Dev Patel's John Wick. Everyone's going to John Wick. Sure. Oh, God, it looks like a good one, I tell you that much. So he's he's written, directed, and starring in this? Yes, and produced by Jordan Peele, it would seem. Yes, yeah, so so as I understand uh, you it. You keep talking. I'm just going to turn the air conditioner off in the other room that I left on because I'm environmentally wild. conscious. Okay, well, I'm going to talk, but I'm going to talk loudly so you can have – Opinions on this. So as I understand it, Dev Patel is a martial artist in addition to being uh, uh, an actor, like quite an accomplished martial artist. And he's is there all- anything he can't do? He also won Millionaire that time, remember? That's right. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Um, and, but, and he's always wanted to be in an action movie, but they're like, Dev Patel. You're the Green Knight. Exactly. That's as much action as you'll be getting. That's right. Wow, disrespectful. Enjoy your ambiguous endings, idiots. <laughs> That is dis- there's so much disrespectfulness this yeah, week. Yeah, that's right. But so he was just like, well, I'm going to do it myself. Uh, and um, this was going to go to Netflix initially. Oh god. Yeah. But depending on who you ask, as I understand it there's something in there's some depiction in it that is maybe uh, like it's some conservative governments maybe in India or something like that and didn't like wouldn't approve of it. And so right. Netflix is like, man, we're going to kind of shy away from this deal a little bit. But then Jordan Peele saw it and was like, no, this is good stuff. This should get a cinema release. Good. And he's right because if it is good, it would be nice to be a Because some things get a cinema release and you're like, oh. Well, this is bad, you might say. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, some things. Bad. Some things are bad. <laughs> some things are bad. Someone paid twenty three dollars to see this, and it was bad. You think to yourself, <laughs> and it goes for two hours and nineteen minutes. Yeah. I thought I'd have some points that I could, you know, get I my tickets a little cheap, but I didn't have any points. Did my points expire? I thought I had points, Mason. Yeah, I thought anyway, I had, sorry, go yeah, on. Yeah, but then, then, then it's bad. Bad. Uh, but this one looks good, and again, if it's good, people will watch it, and it will, you know, it'll stay in the public consciousness as opposed to anything, almost yep. anything that comes out on Netflix which well, will just disappear after literally one day. There was a recent article, and I don't have it in front of me, but I did read it, and here we go. I'm going to half remember it. Whereas the, if you look at the top ten streaming movies uh-huh. from like last year. Yeah, Ghosted. Ev- Ghosted. Every single one of them had a cinematic release. Yeah. So it actually benefits Like movies. a glass onion? Yeah, I mean that's probably not a great example because it barely got a cinema. I'm oh, talking right. like a proper cinematic release, and then it goes to streaming and people are like, oh, I loved that. Or yeah. – Oh, I heard that was good. Now I'm going to watch it. Yeah. As opposed to something just coming up on your screen and then disappearing the next week. And oh, then I paid just, $23 yeah, for this. And I'm oh, stuck it's with bad, fucking, but I'll watch it again. Yeah, I got Ricky Gervais's face fucking looking at me <laughs> on Netflix every week. Uh-huh. I'm never going to watch your special Ricky Gervais. Wow. 
It's boring. You're boring now. Wow. I'm going to so pop up boring. Netflix right now on my phone and see if I get Ricky Gervais. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I don't think I've had him for a few weeks, but yeah. New series, Griselda. Yeah, that's the, um, what's Is that, name? um. Yes. You know. Safari, Saf- um, oh, I was going to say I thought it was um, Michael Douglas' wife. Oh, Catherine Zeta-Jones. Yes, it looks like Catherine Zeta-Jones. Wales' his own. Wales' his own Catherine Zeta-Jones. No. Well. No, Ricky Gervais is gone from my home screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. We think you'll love these. Wrong. Continue Wrong. watching for watching James Lift, the Kevin Hart movie. No fucking way I watched 21 minutes of that. Yeah, you did. Who's got access to my Netflix account? Criminals. Because Claire wouldn't have watched Hackers it. Hackers and so forth. God damn. Your kids? No, they, watch they wouldn't that have was? watched that. Did you see, oh, th- there was a trailer for Pop-Tarts or some footage with the... Jerry Seinfeld. I just saw a written, still image. There's a trailer. There was just some, I think there was a few. So standards. they're doing a, a movie. Yeah, another, this is a Netflix another, movie? Brand, another brands one or whatever. Is this a movie? Like it's a, a Netflix it's a movie. movie. But is it a, a, is a cinematic on. release? But it's the Pop Tarts. Uh, yeah. The Toasted Treat. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Very cool. Unfrosted, the Pop Tart story. Yeah, it is going Oh, it's the invention of the. Okay, so it's not animated Pop Tarts getting into adventures. No. It's who, who invented the Pop Tart. No. What is there going to be some. Is there some dark, gritty origin to Pop Tarts? Here we go. Kellogg's and Post Cereal compete to see if they can produce a revolutionary breakfast pastry in 1963, Michigan. Unbelievable. <laughs> this better be like. <laughs> the funniest fucking Blackberry, movie. where it's like insane. <laughs> yeah, Blackberry. Or was just insane. like weird, where it like. Have you, like, you seen Blackberry? I have, yeah. Do you like the bit where he shouts about Waterloo and being a vampire? <laughs> yeah. So it has to be either that, like there has to be insane executives behind this, yeah. and like a real war of. Sometimes they're good. Tetris yeah. was all right. Okay. Uh, or it has to be like the Weird Al Yankovic biopic, where it's just lies. What an incredible movie, by nice. the way. Did you enjoy that? I did enjoy yeah. that. Um, anyway, I got another trailer for the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Oh yeah, another Henry Cavill action flick directed by Guy Ritchie. You like big men in little glasses? Yes, you're gonna get it. Good. Yeah, that's what I like. So the bad guys, they're gonna get they're it. They're gonna bloody get it. Mm, so get uh, it. this is based off a real unit. I think Christopher Lee was in it as well. Maybe. Nice. Um, unless he's a liar. Unless he's a liar, which you know, I doubt it. Okay. I don't want his. You ghost. can call him out. He's dead. No, he's a spooky ghost now, mate. You can call him out, and he's dead. That's no, fine. come to me and be like, "Boo! I'm going to read you the works of Shakespeare and Tolkien." Oh. I'm like, "Oh, no, thank you." I'm actually, <laughs> not really feeling that at the moment, Christopher Lee. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> I'm told I can't sleep in the first place. <laughs> uh, but it does look like a lot of fun. Mm, kind of an Inglorious Bastards esque kind of feel. Yes, to it. absolutely. He's got a big shotgun. He's shotgunning everybody. Nice. There's nothing wrong with that mm-hmm. if it's in a movie. <laughs> Just to clarify. <laughs> yeah. And you're shooting Nazis. Yeah, for sure. That's just to clarify, Mason. Mm. Anyway, we got to talk about all this Madam Web spum news, Mason. Spum news. So this first bit's via EW. Uh, so it's this is general Dakota Johnson news right? sure. and bits and pieces. She spoke to EW that's like a, an interview where she's talking about the making of Madam Web and she said, I've never really done a movie where you're on, you're, you are on a blue screen and there's a fake explosion going off and somebody's going, explosion, and you act like there's an explosion. That to me this was- This all the budget we had. We, we say explosion and the audience fills it in in their minds. <laughs> that to me was absolutely psychotic. I was like, I don't know if this is going to be good at all. I hope that I did an okay job. She now to be clear, she is on the campaign trail for this movie. Sort of. If people are wondering, no, this didn't come out six months ago, and she's talking about her experience now that it's too late to affect the box office. This is her in full publicity mode, also, promoting this movie that isn't out yet. Bearing in mind, she's the child of two very famous people, so she's probably not right. Oh, that's right, <laughs> Don Johnson and Melanie Griffith. Yeah, yeah, right. But to, to be fair, like to finish that quote, she said, "But I trusted her director, S.J. Clarkson, who has worked on Game of Thrones and other good things. Yeah. But it is spam and." You know, oh, it's spum, all right. Uh, she works so hard and she has not taken her eyes off this movie since we started. Uh, anyway, there's more things. Sure. There's a vo- she hasn't taken her eye off it just in case anybody steals some props or, <laughs> yeah, you know. Paints the set a different colour, which is right. sometimes they'll do. So Variety also had an article this week and it was called, last week, sorry, it was called As Cinematic Universes Stumble, Sony Leans Into Standalone Superhero Series with Madam Web and Craven the Hunter. So uh, here's some quotes from it. Sony has largely minimised the interconnected, interconnected nature of the su- of superhero films reshoots uh, to offer up a vague time period. This is for Madam Web. We talked about this last week mm. because they were originally going to put it in the Andrew Garfield universe and like right. that doesn't work and then like we'll put it in the Tom Holland one. No, that would mean it's in the MCU. 
Let's just put it in its own universe. Mm. And I think so. I saw one of the taglines, which was like, in a universe you don't know about or whatever. Mm, it's something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Imagine a universe where some it's, a it's universe, alone and it's locked a, off. A you universe, can't get there. They can't get out either. In a universe you're not interested in. <laughs> That'll get them, right? <laughs> yeah. Reverse psychology because they'll be like, well, you don't tell me what I won't be interested in. Maybe I would be interested. Oh, no, I won't. <laughs> So also, this is an interesting move. Dakota Johnson's she had she took a jump from WME to CAA in November. These are management companies. Management companies. Um, this was just days after the baffling first trailer debuted. So I don't know if you remember the Madam Web trailer came out and people were not very comfortable with the goings on, were they? No. No. There's a line where it's like, oh, he, uh, he was in the villain was in. The Jungle with My Mother stuff. Let me tell you about this, because when we watch the movie we're going to talk about later, there's, there was a version of that on. They've trimmed that quote down. Oh, to and what? They've cut out the before she, because she, he says, I, he was in the Amazon with my mother researching spiders, spiders before she died, and they cut out the before she died. Oh, my God, she's back. She might be back, but I think it's also because they're like, that's too much. That's too many words in a sentence. It is, isn't it? It's yeah. un, unpleasant, and the more you think about it, the more your brain rots away. So. Yeah. But I thought that was funny. Like they've, they've gone because what happened? What has had to happen there is they've had to go panic stations. Let's rework this trailer. How can we do that? Keep it the same, but trim off three words. I right. I also got the trailer. To send it, they have to send it to all the yeah. cinemas. Crazy. I missed it. I was on my phone for that yeah, nice. the trailer. I'm right. gonna be real with you, Mason. Um. So yeah. So she moved management companies uh, after the trailer debuted, and this raised industry eyebrows, along with a raz in a recent SNL monologue describing the film as. Like if AI generated your boyfriend's perfect movie, which also I just want to point out that's really insulting uh, because <laughs> uh, this is nobody's perfect movie. Ouch. I haven't seen it yet, but that's no, but a, it's uh, if AI did it. AI, oh, know, like a bad version, very okay. flawed, and okay. bad. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Now, what I think happened here, and I think the reason she moved in management companies because I think she blames them for Sony tricking her into doing what she thought was an MCU movie. Yeah. She probably thought she was going to be. Uh, like Captain Marvel or whatever. Yeah. She probably thought that, well, I'm going to be like, you know how Tom Holland Spider-Man and Tobey Maguire Spider-Man and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man? Mm-hmm. I'm Spider-Woman, yeah. so I'm going to be in that unit. Yeah, that's right. But that's – no. do your research. I saw somebody – Do point, your own research. I saw somebody on Twitter pointed this out. They went to uh, Dakota Johnson and Sydney Sweeney and a couple of other actors' Instagram pages, and when it was announced they were signed on to – Madam Webb, they all did a post about it and they, they, you know, a little post about the Variety article or whatever it was and they'd all tagged Marvel Studios on the thing. So uh, I think all of them thought they were signing for Marvel Studios. I knew it. Yeah. I fucking knew it, Mason. Because yeah. of course you'd be furious if you're like, you made Morbius accidentally. Anything yeah. could be good. Not Morbius, though. No, that was bad. It was but bad. anything can be good. From this point forward is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Because many things in the past have been yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget what you know about the past. Because we've said in, in the past a lot, we have said anything can be good, and then it turns out we've been wrong a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that is wrong. Mostly Sony Spider-Man pictures. A lot of them are those, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know, it also gives me the benefit of the doubt if they ever accidentally make a good one, I can be, see? Yeah. I said it could have been good, and it was sort of. I'm coded. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So also there's rumours that Sony want to bring back Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire for Spider-Man 4. Of course they would. Don't do that. Leave them in their own universes. Just make it a standalone Spider-Man movie where he has to whatever, okay? And he's sad about it. <laughs> make a parallel universe where it's Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. They're both Spider-Man in the same universe, but Tom Holland is not there. <laughs> yes. And it's just two Spider-Men. Yes. Great. That's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. You could just... Two Aunt Mays. Yeah. Yeah. Just put, you know what? Just take Andrew Garfield and just put him in the Raimi universe. It's fine. Right. It's fine. Yeah. Let's do Spider Man. It's, it's fine. fine. They're both forty. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, you might remember this. So at CinemaCon 2022, the studio brought Bad Bunny on stage to announce El Muerto, I remember. which was going to, where he was going to play the superhuman luchador, uh, which was going to be one of those Sony spin-off Spider Man movies. They where, already have the rights to it, so yeah, exactly. Uh, but, of course, they said here, but his conflicting tour and script revisions now means the project, uh, so he had to leave the project. Uh-huh. But here's the thing. Uh, we saw an interview where they asked him about it and he was not happy and it was, it was his PR person was like, obviously that's not happening. Yeah, right. But here's the thing. The project is back in development without the star on the books. That's so wild. So El Muerto <laughs> could be coming. But, but that's it because the only reason this one really exists is because he looked at all the – and he found the, that character is on like three pages of one comic book. Yeah, and he's like, this is the one I want to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Uh, and and so they're now going. His, they're going with his choice without him. That's interesting, isn't it? Just yeah. Um, Did you have some more vague Dakota Johnson news? No, but I I remember this from the other week. Oh, I watched that Hot Ones episode and Sydney Sweeney did promote Madam Web. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Who knew? I don't know, man. Uh, Iowa Devery was going to be in Thunderbolt, so she's from The Bear. Oh, yeah, that's right. And they swapped her out for... Uh, Geraldine Viswanathan. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, but apparently this is due to because uh, everything got delayed and the, the season three of The Bear is going to be... Well, they swapped out The Century recently as well. Stephen Ewan, yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to be... And now it's Top Gun guy, Bill Pullman's son or whatever oh. his name is. It's going to be Century. Top Pullman. Top Pullman. I love that. Little uh, I didn't know Ayo Debra was going to be in a Marvel thing. But no, me neither. Yeah. But she's not. No, she's not. Don't worry about it. She got no, too famous. Not. Yeah, she got yeah. too famous. They didn't move it along quick enough. That's right. All right, should we move it along? Yes. Anything can be good. Hold that thought, though. Oh, come on, mate. First movie of the year for us. Uh, come on, mate. From the twisted mind of Matthew Vaughn, we've got Argyle. Before this, I watched The Talent of Mr. Ripley, and I thought that was great. No, no. Great did you movie. go to cinemas for it? No. Was it I saw a it on my TV. Movie? Exactly. No. I watched that last year as well. What a good movie. It They're doing good. a new series with Ripley. Andrew Scott. Yeah, that's right. That looks good. That is, I believe that is a remake of this so it's not like Ripley Origins or anything. It's a Ripley remake Origins. of Talented Mr. Ripley. I did watch it I because... When does the, he fight the alien? Ah, yeah. Never. What? Yeah. He could do it. He fights alienation. By killing other people and yep. stealing their identities? I think so, yeah. That's what he does. That's great. Because it's the 10-year the uh, anniversary of the passing of Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh. And he's great in that. I agree. He's so good at... Giving a really big performance, but he's also very like a real performance. Yeah. Like, you know, when he shows up in that movie and he's just like, he's the hey. big fat party animal guy, but yeah. then he's also just a real guy. He's a real guy. Incredible. Hunger Games too. Also good. Yeah, also good. <laughs> also good. Also, didn't, um, just quickly, Malkovich did a Ripley movie as well. Yeah, he did. And he's in a second of the trailer. For? For Ripley, the new one. Is he? He's in it for a fraction of a oh, second. Oh, Ripley. And I looked... On IMDb and he's not on there. So I don't know why. And Barry, someone did, he's the sniper in Seven Private Ryan, did one as well, I think. It's called like oh. Ripley's oh, Mate. Ripley Underground or something? I don't know, something like that. Okay. Anyway. Did you know there's also like French versions of Talented Mr. Ripley? Le Ripley. Le Ripley, that's right. <laughs> Le, Ro- Rip- Le Ripley kills the alien. Royal Ripley. <laughs> Anyways. Go on. Twisted Mind and Matthew Vaughan, Argyle, on a budget of $200 million. Incredible. Aided by Apple Plus. Apple, yep, Apple original. This is an Apple original Seeing film. those logos come up before movies and cinemas, I don't like it, Mason. You know what's interesting? <laughs> I was like, boy, Apple original film, they've mostly done pretty premium stuff. And then I no. looked at the list of stuff and no. it's mostly garbage. The TV's good, yeah. I would say. But, yeah, they've done some bad movies. Ghosted, Ghosted for example. Atrocious. Yeah. Um, anyway, box office for this in the US was $16.5 million, Internationally about sixteen point nine. This is not good. Uh, in terms of box office. Okay, but what about how good the movie is? Well, before we get into that, oh. what do you think the story was? All right, okay, so... Try uh, not to do the several twists in this, by the way. Okay, I'll try not. Yeah, try the, to hold the, back. The endless twists, okay. Because uh, so, they just keep happening. I don't know how much of this we can do non-spoilers because mm. there's like there's the twist and then they just twist all the way to the end. Let me get <laughs> to the plot, James. Okay, so... So Bryce Dallas Howard plays... A woman named Ellie. Yep. And she is a writer and she writes about a cool spy called uh, Argyle, Agent Argyle. Yeah, man. Uh, and he's uh, he's played by uh, handsome Henry Cavill. Yep. And he's cool and suave and he gets into all sorts of adventures and everybody loves the books and they're big sellers. Uh, but then, uh, then it turns out that uh, some of the stuff she's written in a book, uh, it's all very close to the truth. It's real. Because, uh, and, and, uh, but then the, the, all the secret agencies, they want to get her for reasons. Mm-hmm. And then Sam Rockwell's there. And he goes, hello, I'm charming and everything. Yeah. And he continues to be. I'll do a little dance sometimes. No complaints. I would say. Sometimes I feel like I'm only doing a little dance because they've asked me to do a little dance. I think he's just doing dances. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Yeah, man, uh-huh. he's doing dances. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I will say this does start off as kind of like a brisk and fun, like pretty solid action film. Like when <laughs> Sam Rockwell, you know, uh, when they pair up initially and there's uh-huh. a fight on a train and it cuts mm-hmm. between him and like Henry Cavill because yeah. he's, he's a – Henry, the Henry Cavill stuff isn't real, and she like imagines. Or is it? Or is it? <laughs> uh, but, and so, I, I there's a, that fight scene is quite good. Yeah. Uh-huh. But then it's just nonsense. Yeah. What a nonsense movie. Here's the thought I had, and le- not fun nonsense like when Good Kingsman is nonsense. Yeah. Here's the thought I had upon leaving the cinema was I I would love to know 
I would love to see what this cast would do with a good movie. Oh, my God. Can like you just, imagine? Because we got Bryce Dallas Howard, who's great. We've got Sam Rockwell. We've got Henry Cavill. Just a bunch John of... John Cena's in it. John Cena is in this. Um, Samuel L. Jackson's Samuel L. in Jackson. it. Ryan Cranston's in it. Uh, what's her name? She's in... Catherine uh, O'Hara. Catherine, yeah, Catherine O'Hara's in it. Just, but just, just a, just a super. Oh, and the opening is it the opening? There's. Oh no, that was a different. I was watching Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I'm thinking of a better thing that I was watching. <laughs> it is. It is very unfortunate that two espionage properties came out this week, and one is very good, and one is very bad. Sure. Yeah, just, just an incredible cast. Uh, Sophia Boutella, Ariana DeBose. Also, I've seen recently. I on Twitter today, I saw a bunch of like. Here's John Cena and and uh, Ariana DeBose sitting down and being interviewed about their process and working with Matthew Vaughn and all the incredible stuff. You guys were in this movie for four minutes. <laughs> yeah. What is happening? What is but anyway, happening? just just a, a, like a, so many talented, likable people, and I'm like, yep. this is probably fun to make on the day. Seems but fun. But it's just – it has a somewhat strong opening yep. and then the plot keeps going, mm. but it doesn't – there's no reason for anything to keep going, and the, the there there is there's twist upon twist, but it's it's like look how clever we are, but also we're going to explain every twist as it happens because we don't respect you as an audience. How many of the twists did you see coming? Most of the twists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think also the main twist, which we'll get to, like the initial one. Mm-hmm was also spoiled on social media like a year ago. Or even more, yeah. Yeah, there's a weird marketing campaign for this also where... There's a real book you can buy. There's a real book you can buy because it's in the movie there's, she's writing the fourth book of this character, Argyle, Henry, yeah. Henry Cavill. And the, the first book came out earlier this year and they were kind of making it so that like this is a real reclusive author. This who, author's come out of nowhere and watch how she yeah. made this incredible spy thriller. And then she made one book and then they decided to make the movie about the fourth book. Like it doesn't, uh-huh. they really fucked it. Like I didn't know about any of that until after when I was well, reading so apparently up the book's r- riddled with like errors. So apparently it's like yeah. they've churned it out on the cheap or they've written it with AI did. or whatever. Yeah, it'd be whatever they did with Paul Rudd's Ant-Man book or whatever. It's probably oh, right, whatever yeah. that is. I don't mm. know. I, I assume. Also this like borrows from a lot of other stuff. There's like... And, the, and it, it doesn't do any of – like all the twists you've seen in other things, uh-huh. and I can't name the movies specifically because that will, will we'll give it, it away. Spoilers, we'll do it in spoilers, yeah. But even things like – there's a lot of like CGI fire and smoke and oil in this. There's an oil ice skating sequence. Yes. And it just looks like shit. It really does. And I, so I read a review afterwards that was like, this is a highlight of the film. No. And I'm like, the, the transporter did the, the transporter That's what did I was going to say. The ago. transporter did it. Jason Statham does it where he kicks – the bike pedals off a bike. Attaches them to his feet. Attaches them to his feet and uses them to beat up guys in like a patch of oil. For real. And it's amazing. Like, and it's I mean, really obviously, g- obviously it's probably not real oil and they do no, it with camera not, angles or yeah. whatever. But it looks convincing. And I remember in the cinema going, this is incredible. <laughs> yeah. That like Statham is a star and he remains a star. Like what a, like an innovative thing and he's shirtless. And he's, hey, I watched The Beekeeper. I'll talk about it he's later. He's shirtless and he's, and he's, <laughs> he's oiled up. He's shirtless and oiled and he's looking cool and he's doing karate on people and he's, you know, like that. What a what an incredible, just you know, this like a fun, like a little guy who's a steamroller kind of thing. Yeah. But this is just so like derivative of yeah. that, and, it's, and none of it's real, and it doesn't look doesn't real. Feel or look What's real. What's interesting, I think, is because so much of the movie, part of the movie, is we see the adventures of Agent Argyle, the book within the movie, so the fictional universe yeah. that this woman has been writing about, and in this in this fictional book. Agent Argyle, he's, you know, he's like effortlessly suave and he's looking cool even when he's, you know, punching a guy or like falling because he's been hit with a grenade and, you know, he's still like... Giving a wink. Giving a wink to the, the cat. Yep, yeah, and, and, and it's contrasted with like Sam Rockwell's character who's also a spy, but he's kind of, he's meant to be, this is the real stuff, but there isn't really a contrast. No, he just kind of... He seems a bit more hurt when he gets hit for yeah. a second, and he's and he's a little kind of grubby. little loosey goosey, loosey goosey, and like g- grubbier. And he's got at one point he has kind of long hair, and it's just there doesn't really feel like it's it's not confusing, but it's a little bit disappointing that there's no real difference. Like yeah. there's an imaginary secret organization, and they have like you know transparent workstations, and everything's very like holographic and glamorous and what have you, and then you see the real version, it's the same. Oh, I didn't even realize, I didn't even think of that. But yes, you're right. But it, it, it's, there's, yeah. it, it would. Maybe you could do like a 1960s kind of, like Man From U.N.C.L.E. kind of 
aesthetic. Yeah, sure. And then the modern and the is, modern version where it's yeah. you know it's still high tech, but it's like it looks like regular yeah. offices or something. And I like can that. understand why like when some of this stuff looks like hyper real. You'd be like, well, that's the book universe. Yeah. But it's all of it is like weirdly hyper real. There's a bit where he like at the start where he grinds Agent Argyle, the um, Henry Cavill. He straddles he straddles a car across two buildings. Yeah, and he's it. like grinding it like a skateboard down like yeah. a ramp and whatever. Yeah. And it looks bad, but it's not, not even bad. That's not even true. It looks how it's supposed to look because it's like a fantastical universe. Yeah. But it all looks like that. Yeah. It's and again, like I, we we shouldn't focus on what a movie isn't, as, and and focus on what the movie is. But I think, I there there's more humor to be mined. I think from like Ellie thinks that the world of espionage is like this, or she writes it like, oh, it's very, it's always sexy and it's always glamorous. Mm. And then you contrast it with like you know more like the killer, where everything's a drainer and everything's yeah. boring and everyone's gray. broke, <laughs> everyone's broke and dirty and <laughs> kind of thing. There's like there's one there's one funny joke in, in where I remember where there's she the 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 super the super spy agency in real life they want her because she can seemingly predict mm. events like she's she's her mind is so attuned to the the world of spying she's done so much research that she she can at, so accurately imagine what the spy world is like they're like well she can probably predict mm. the future of spying or what have you and so and they try to get her uh, Sam Rockwell tries to get her to imagine what might happen next and she's like oh, what if the phone you got had a super high-tech tracking device and you could take it out and you could, you know, it, it would pair to another satellite over and, you know, and all, mm. all this, you know, super spy stuff. And he's like, no, I threw it away. I threw the phone away. It's a burner phone. Mm. And I was like, that's funny. Like that's a fun contrast yeah. between what she imagines and what real spying is like. But, but I never do any of that. But the phone did have a thing in it and whatever. Did it? <laughs> Didn't it end up having something in it? No. They oh, just... no, they use a... Court, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And there's also there's too much of it. There's too much plot. There's too much fetching. Looking at a thing for coordinates to go to a computer to unlock a thing, and there's a key. And in then it. we have to keep constantly explaining everything because yeah. they're like the order. And again, I I feel like we, we talk about something like another Apple original film, like Kills of the Flower Moon. Yeah, where they don't. They're like, we want to make this because it's 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 a piece of art. And the, the filmmaker shouldn't have to compromise. And so not everything is spelled out. There's not a scene where um, Lily Gladstone's character is like, well, actually, Leo, I'm mad at you for yeah. all the betrayal you did to me. You don't have to say that. You can. It's in her eyes. Yeah. You know what I mean? But this movie is very much, well. This happens and I think this about you. It is and, a really, it's this. a very much a well that happened kind of movie. You also touched on something just briefly where you said the one joke that you liked. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's missing. One of the things that's missing from this as opposed to like, the good Kingsman movies, which oh. I think is the first and the prequel. Mm-hmm. And even like first – Matthew Vaughan, by the way, has made – he made Layer Cake. Like he's yeah. made – He made Layer Cake. He made X-Men First Class. Which is one of my favorite X-Men movies. Kick-Ass. First yep, Kick-Ass. Kick ass, yeah, and that's got a hyper-reality to it that works. Yeah. Which he's is about 50-50 for me, I, I think. I would say a bit more than 50-50. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. But then like there's moments, there's action sequences in, in this that kind of go to be like the frenetic like church sequence from the first Kingsman where – what's Colin – Firth kills like a like a Bunch congregation of, of people, right? Yeah. But none of that feels like this, like at all. No, it, it's all it's very sanitized. Yeah. Like all the all the and, and uh, you know all the muzzle flashes are CGI. But we know from something like John Wick Four, if you really work at that, nobody will ever notice. But yeah. in this, it's very noticeable. There's no blood. Yeah, I mean, I saw somebody describe this as a red notice. They're like, this movie's a red notice. I mean, look, as someone who's currently watching Red Notice. Mm. Is that true? I think it's a cut above a Red Notice. Yeah. I think there are more memorable scenes, but I don't think they're – again, they're like you said, they, they don't. They never look like they're really happening, so why am I investing Except in this? Except for the train one. Except for the train one, which is pretty good. And and again, it's it, it, it promises a movie I think that it doesn't deliver, which is yeah. like you thought spying was like this, but it's just a dirty job. And I didn't expect it to be this bad. Oh, this long? All this long, I was really like going into this. I remember the morning of. I think I saw a YouTube video, which was like it's like you're uh, describing like the day you got fired or something yeah, like that. I didn't know. I didn't know. I went in the morning of, and you know, I had my breakfast. It just and- really surprised because I saw. I think it was a YouTube video, and it was like I go reviews are in, and they're bad. I'm like, oh, is it? Okay, mm. I didn't. All right, well, I hope that's not true. Yeah, and yeah, it is. It is bad. I mean, some people have seen in the Great Mate. Some people have mentioned it. Maybe you could read some out, but um. There are some people that did enjoy because I think there are some fun moments in it. And I think 
that's like Sam Rockwell and Bryce Dallas Howard, a good pairing in a better movie. I mean, we talked about this recently, but Anna Kendrick did a movie with Sam Rockwell where he's a hitman. Uh, Mr. Ryan. Yeah. and They are wearing different shirts. Last week I mentioned oh, that him and John Cena are wearing well, the go. same shirt, but they're not. I didn't know. I'm, I, I apologize to everyone. But I look, I don't really remember much about that movie, but I remember that being like, they're, it's a good pairing. It's yeah. fun pairing. And yeah. I think it's a fun pairing here, but it's just in a bad movie. Yeah, that's a shame. Spoilers? Spoilers. Another Wait, thing where... Are we, are we evaluating this movie on its own? Oh, yeah. But, uh, worst movie ever. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. But I didn't enjoy it, and it got worse for me. And also, I didn't like the post credits and the endings. <laughs> okay, right. It really gained his have... honest, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, we'll they talk re- about really it. did. Uh, I'm going to say... Ugh. It's pretty in the middle, if I'm It being, really is. Uh, I mean, honest. I think it inches towards best movie ever for me. Again, I, I think these days I really I really just enjoy the cast of something more than I enjoy. Totally. The, the, I, I can see, yeah. I, I, you could, if you said, do, do you want to change your mind? I would say yes, like whatever. I don't, I'm not fussed. Yeah, it is the worst movie ever though. Oh, wow. It? Yeah, it <laughs> okay. is the worst movie ever. I'm sorry, everyone. But <laughs> but you know what? This isn't going to kill anyone's career. I think it's probably fine that I yeah. say this specifically isn't going to kill anyone's career. Sure. So sorry, everybody. Anyways, Ali is the real Argyle. Or is she? Oh, wow. Um, we'll talk about it. But yeah, if you've seen like Long Kiss Goodnight or Born Identity or whatever, it's Spy Forgets They're a Spy and yeah, uh-huh. et cetera. But it's, in addition to that, yes. there's... Her parents are fake because they created a fake personality for her. The head of the agency in Catherine O'Hara, who's Brian Cranston, her pretend to be her parents because she was in an accident. And so uh-huh. she thinks she's a writer and she's not predicting things. She's actually remembering ty- things, remembering things and, and typing them out. So when she's remembering John Cena, she's actually remembering uh, Sam, Rockwell. Sam Rockwell. And they're together. Yeah. They were together in real life and whatever. Yeah. And when she's not in real life in the movie. And when she's remembering Henry Cavill, she's actually remembering herself, which is why she keeps seeing him, yes. including sometimes she'll see him in the mirror and she thinks initially that it's uh, you know, post traumatic stress yeah. or something like that. So until he actually turns up at the end. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. So but uh yeah, so so she um God, it's a lot to unpack, isn't it? Also, this, this might be a Kingsman movie or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll or this it. is a teaser for a Kingsman prequel. Or a book. Or a book <laughs> or another movie. <laughs> Let me look. I was going to save this for our our subsequent podcast. Sure. Uh, uh, sorry, one of our additional podcasts. Uh, we got we got this covered. Covered. Let's which is go. A podcast where we talk about uh, clickbaits. Clickbaits. But this one's from Screen Rant. Love Came it. out seven hours ago. Eight Argyle sequels, prequels, and crossovers. The movie sets up. Yep. And I just want to be like, I guess. Well, you say bold, that isn't it? Because. According to Deadline, various Argyle and Kingsman prequels and sequels are in development. Matthew Vaughn apparently wants to make a prequel series to this, which I guess would be the ongoing adventures of Ali, various books. Right. Okay, so for so uh, if you if you hear and you want to hear the spoilery details without watching this movie, so uh, Bryce Dallas Howard's character, her name is R. Kyle uh, in real life. Very good. Uh, but And she was the, one of the best super spies, but she was sort of evil, Total Recall style, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's also Total Recall. She's a little bit Total, she's a little bit total Recall. But then she's in, and she wanted to. She had to get a. She she found a master list of something or other. It doesn't matter. I've forgotten what it is. But it's one of these movies where you just they've got a list. They've got a chip with a USB drive, and it's got a list. And it's we've got, got an to, agency something. We've got to get the list of the agents or whatever. And so she gets the list. But then she is in an accident. She loses her memory. This is five years ago. Yep. And uh, and she gets recovered by Brian Cranston. Head of the agency. This and, is in 2019, just to clarify. That's right. And uh, Catherine O'Hara's character, who is a psychologist, yep. and they do pre- in order to figure out. And she's lost her memory, but in order to figure out where to get the master list of the data or the weather chip or the USB or whatever, they pretend to be her parents and they hypnotize her and they give her this fake identity, like Zoolander, exactly. And then they give her a journal and they're like, "You should write." Uh, some fun adventures in your journal. And then she writes some books and then somehow they get published. Yep. Uh, and then she becomes a world famous author and and they're like, and they're, they're like, okay, well now. We've How do you write so well? You're super spy. And she's like, I could never. Yeah. But yeah. Somebody writes. But also there's two sequences in this movie where she, uh, she's at some sort of book reading event and she just reads the last page of her book. <laughs> yeah. Like the new book. And then Agent Argo, he escaped on a jet ski. Or what whatever. is she doing there? Is she, is she sat a bunch of unsuspecting fans down and she's read them the entire book? Maybe. Or has she set a bunch of unsuspecting fans down and she's just read the last page? She's like, spoilers, idiots. 
<laughs> it's also wild that the oh, also a- Sam Rockwell, he's her boyfriend. Oh yeah, yeah. Did I mention but that? But he can't yeah. tell her that she used to be because she's got a different personality. Different and there's a moment where he's like, "I want to shoot this woman in the head," but he really means this version of yeah, her, and not the right. other version. That he loves. And she's got a cat. Yep. And, and also, you're like, "What's the deal?" With oh the yeah, cat? the cat. It's, it's just a cat. It's just a cat. It's just a cat. And I guess. It's, oh yeah, you said you pr- had a prediction that James Bond was going to be the real. No, I said Dam- Daniel Craig might be. He's there. James Bond, Mason. I guess he is. Yeah, yeah. but uh, anyway, this is worse. Uh, what else? Also, uh, it's just a cat. Oh, also, why is it that it's a CGI cat? It is, a, but it's some. Sometimes it's a real cat. It looks mostly CGI. It's mostly, but it's Claudia Schiffer's cat. What? It's Claudia Schiffer's because she's married to Matthew Vaughn, and that's her cat. Oh shit! I forgot about that. Yeah. That's an unlikely duo, <laughs> isn't it? Though, Brian Cranston's character is like filled with rage constantly and he's like on the verge of bubbling over into into murder at every second when he's in the uh, yeah. facility of the division or the com- the company or whatever it's called. He and shoots then, bloody Rob. Um, Rob Delaney. Yeah. He was in this for five seconds. Yep. Uh, like a lot of actors. I hope sure. they got big checks and they just walked away. From Apple, yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope they got a free Apple Plus subscription. But then when he's pretending to be Ellie's father, he's like super nice and whatever. Like I, it doesn't square that this character who is like – about to snap at every moment is like, oh, I'll just deal with this person I hate. Yeah. You know? Yep. I agree. It's weird. Uh, there's a moment in this where they have to, uh, Ellie and and Sam Rockwell have to go to a, a, a place in the Middle East, I think, and they have to, to get a chip from the secret, the secret keeper. Person. It's very John Wick 4. Yeah, it is. Uh, and they so they dress up. Yep. And so they Sam Rockwell dance. decides to dress up as Argyle. Argyle. So he does the weird flat top hair the, and he gets it a little bit. He gets peroxide tint, uh, tinted. And then he puts on the weird Nehru jacket. Yep. Why? What? I don't know. I don't know. He's not even our guy. He's not our guy. <laughs> He's the no, other guy. Nobody dresses like this. No. No sorts of villain look. Yeah, it's it is. That's why Doctor No dresses. Yep, absolutely. God damn. Also, uh, Ellie gets goes blonde. She goes blonde, yeah. Doesn't, man. I don't like it. I don't like it. I mean, it. with the dresser clashes, let's be real as well. She looks very washed out. And the blonde hair, And yeah. if she's supposed to be Argyle, yeah. she should wear like a green velvet dress. I think that would look great on her. And have the hair. And have the hair. Do the flat top. Absolutely. Yeah. The I'm po- glad I said worst movie ever. The more that I said. Yeah, I, I know, it. right? So yeah. at the end, she's doing another reading and Henry Cavill's there for real. He yeah. said he's got a southern accent. And he's got a mullet. And he's got a, he looks mullet for Superman. He did it. Um, he looks ridiculous. <laughs> um, so presumably... The reason that she's imagining Henry Cavill is because this is a spy that she's liaised with in the past, or a villain that she's come up against. Oh, like he? Okay, right, maybe. I don't, I don't know specifically. So, do you think she's the real agent Argyle, but there's also another agent Argyle? Potentially. Um, also, I don't care. I don't, also don't care. Uh, I'll be amazed if any of these sequels. I think maybe we'll get another Kingsman. Well, here's the thing: because in the post credits. That you, well, the mid credits. There is no post credits because I knew nobody would stick around for the yes, post credits. Well, they 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 drop the mid credits on you before you can leave. Absolutely, they do. So it cuts to the King's Man pub in twenty the years early ago, two thousands, and uh, there's a young boy, the mulleted boy, and he goes up and he's like, "Hello, I need a Kingsman gun," and he gives him one, and they go, "This is Kingsman," yeah. and then it says Argyle, the first book or something. No, King's it says Man's- Argyle. It says Argyle. Book one, the movie coming soon, now, and everybody in my cinema was like, "Nah." There was a re- now look. I, there's an answer to this, and there's probably even an interview because that book exists. It's a, like a book you can buy. It's the one mm. we were talking about. Yeah. Or is this a series of prequel movies that are set within the universe? So they're the books that Ali wrote within the universe, yeah. and that's also the Kingsman universe. Or is this the actual thing that happened in Ali's past? But the thing that happened, but it was Henry Cavill. And it's his story as a king's man because it can't be fictional because then it wouldn't say twenty years ago. That's what it isn't I'm saying. Actually, yeah. twenty years. But ago. the other thing is, like Sophia Patola's in this, and so Sam Jackson, and they were in the first Kingsman. They were. It's so true. I don't know what this is supposed yeah. to be. Oh, Sophia Patola was the knives leg. She was the knives legs woman. Yeah, right. Knives out. Oh. On my legs. On my legs. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so what a mess. I mean, and also, you know. There's nothing wrong with a filmmaker going, I love working with these people. They're my friends. Totally. I'll bring that's, another that's not what I have a problem with. No, I know. With. Okay. It seems like you do. Remember I said there was a savage, uh, there was a savage IGN thing come upcoming. Here it is. It's an IGN article by Amelia Emberwing, uh, which I read. Um, so this is how this is how it goes. So this is an ending explained for the movie Argyle. Okay. You know, I've done a few videos like that. They're all yeah. bangers, mate. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you see them on YouTube, they're everywhere. 
She wrote, The ending explained article format comes in a lot of different forms. Not to pull the curtain back too far in anything, but they become a product of our digital landscape because no matter the medium or genre, folks are Googling to find that ending. Nobody's ever really happy about it, honestly. Commenters inevitably call the writer a shill and accuse them of being <laughs> creatively bereft. Meanwhile, the writer stares dead-eyed at the cursor while they try to regurgitate what they just witnessed in a way that doesn't make us feel like soulless drones. But people keep Googling it, so we have to keep writing about it. Because of that, our goal at IGN is to find a fun angle or at least make it informative in a way that extends beyond the boilerplate synopsis that makes us want to slam our laptop shut (laughs) and go find a whiskey. This ending explained, it's trying to protect you. Damn. I I care about you and I I want to keep you safe and happy. So I'm telling you that I sat through over two hours of Argyle so you don't have to. And then it goes on to explain the ending. But I just love how it's just like, I hate doing this and this is bullshit. Incredible. That's good stuff. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I know there is a definitive answer to this, like mm. about what's going on and yeah. links to the Kingsman universe, but honestly, I don't give a shit. Like, no. I really don't. Um, unless you have any thoughts, Mason. No, I mean... I like two of those three Kingsman Yeah, movies. and I think the... Even the one where Hitler's in the post-credits. Sure. Uh, some would say you like that one the most. <laughs> no, no, um, no. Because the Kingsman universe has that kind of heightened, uh, you know, action. Yeah. You know, if if you recall the the start of the first one, you've, is it Matthew McFadden? No, it's um, no, it's someone else. It's that other guy, but he plays. Remember, he plays the the kind of the the James Bond you think is going to be the main character, who is super suave. It's and he's fucking dad yeah. It's or the whatever, previous yeah. Galahad or you know whatever it is. But and he's you know he's super smooth and and you know he can he can shoot a guy and take the martini off his serving tray. Yeah, you know, and a similar thing happens in the Kingsman prequel. Like you think the main character is one person, yeah. ends up being Ray Fiennes or whatever. Yeah, and Kingsman Two is atrocious. But it works in that universe. But it doesn't. And it's clearly yeah. the idea being well, we'll transfer it to this. And I guess if you wanted to, if the plan was always to tie them together, I guess you have to have super heightened adventure and action in the real world of. Argyle. Yes. Because otherwise, because if I guess if it were kind of mundane and most of the espionage in this was just sitting at a radio listening for <laughs> tones or whatever, like they actually do in espionage. I think that could be funny though. But it wouldn't work when, I guess it, then they meet the Kingsman guys who are all spinning through the air and shooting two guns at once and firing bullets out of the yeah. umbrellas or whatever. It would seem a little ridiculous. But also, like, this is just that though, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It's just like a, like a tamer version of it. Mm. Yeah. God damn. But why make it tamer if it's Apple? If they're just going to give you $200 million. It's a great question. Yeah. I don't. So I'm trying to find the reviews on the, the Great Mates group, um, oh, yes. but they've been buried. Um, <laughs> perhaps by the twisted mind of Matthew Vaughan. Perhaps intentionally. The twisted lawyers of Matthew Vaughan. Yeah. I just, um, I don't know, man. I Also, I think if it just looked better, I would have been more forgiving. <laughs> yeah. If, like, the action sequences didn't feel like face replacement or CGI doubles. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if... Which I'm okay with if it looks. Do you feel this would have worked if we see the we see the adventures of fictional agent Argyle and it's all crazy and over the top? It's crazy. And then Ellie falls into the world of real espionage and it's kind of boring and mundane. Yeah. But then we sort of build up to a, like a crazy action sequence. And that's at the kind end. of what the what Kickass is the first Kickass. Yeah, right? like it, like initially it's a dirty fight on a train and it's kind of you know with a spectacular ending and they escape on the parachute. Yeah. But then as they as the characters sort of develop. They sort of, I don't know. They they you know, there'd be a, there'd this be, doesn't normally happen. Well, exactly. Whatever, there'd be a know. contrast between her going, "Why can't you just use the oil slick or the smoke screen in your car?" And he's like, "Well, we don't have the oil slick and the smoke screen because it's not a real thing," kind of thing. Yeah. And then you sort of you build, and at the end, maybe there's some crazy gadgets, and she's like, "I knew it." I knew it. And then they do an. You he's know, like, "Yeah, it's expensive, so we don't use them." Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe, maybe yeah. that would. Yeah. Work. Well, you uh, know, maybe you should make uh, this movie again. Yeah. Also, Remake Argyle. Why, why doesn't Henry Cavill just look like James Bond? Why doesn't he just have his regular hair? I'm I'm mystified why they gave him this stupid haircut. Also, <laughs> is Ellie a good writer? No, she's bad. I think, yeah. I they think, seem bad, these They do these seem books. bad. I mean, there's no real correlation between a successful book and a good book in a lot no, of instances. certainly. But especially when it comes to this sort of stuff. Yeah. But it's, I don't know. Yeah. Seems bad. Anyway, I couldn't find the post in Greymates, but some people liked it. That's great. And that's good. I want everybody to have a good experience all of the time. Well, if you think that, then we should recommend people don't see the movie Argyle because <laughs> I thought it was bad. I am more than happy to do that. Yeah, so Should we move it along? Let's move it along. To what? What we're reading. What, what we're going to read. Well, just quickly, what do you think is the next thing from this universe, if anything? Kingsman. King, Kings, <laughs> they are doing Kingsman 3. It's going to be Kingsman 3, I yeah. think. Yeah. 
And they're also are they also going to do? They're also going to do. Oh, a, here's something I wanted. To they're say. also going to do a King's Man sequel. So set during World War Two. Great, I think. cool. Um, that's great. But how's he still getting money for this? It's great. I love it. Okay. Well, they probably made money, I guess. Yeah. I for, Matthew Vaughan has done this thing, and he did in Kingsman Two, where if you're shot in a very specific and vital part of your body, mm. you can survive it on a technicality. Yeah. In Kingsman like Two, he gets shot through the head, and they have a brain saving. That the thing balloon. that sucks the bullet out of your brain and, and in your this. Head. You can shoot someone in the heart at a very specific point and it will go through a part of your heart which is fine and out the back and if you plug the hole, you're fine. And it happens to two different people in this movie once by that accident. That is true. Oh, that's what I was going to say. You know what? I think – We're that, back on it. That's the, that's the other thing that I thought was kind of funny because you see like – I did see that coming because you see the email and it was yeah. like, if you see the shoot in the something with heart and I'm like, oh, that's going to happen later. That's absolutely going to yeah. happen. The other bit where she shoots him – and and I'm like, well, that's she's done the trick, obviously. Mm. And then he do, he Sam Rockwell says, okay, you haven't handled a gun in five years, and you thought that would work. And she's like, yes. Mm. You know what would be might work as well. What if she has crazy super spy powers and he doesn't? Yeah, that would work because she she'd be basing it off her memories of being a super spy. And if he was just as some schlub, yeah, I think that'd be a better team up. That's and eventually, and like, also. and initially, he's like, well, I'm. I guess that's kind of how it works. I'm MI5 and you're MI6 or whatever. Yeah. Not that because they're not British. but you it's, know. And it's not rankings. It's not, it's not like black belts. It's not black belts, Mason. No. It's not black belts. Not black Did you belts. think it was black belts? Yes. It's not though, is it? No, it's not. Um, All right, we should talk about. What are we doing? What are we reading? Yeah. What are we going to read? Good movie. Mm, disagree. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? What are you reading? Well, James, I think we've both been reading the same thing, and What's that, that is the TV series Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I'm only about episode. halfway through the first episode. Okay. But well, I'm, I'm only a couple of episodes in. Well, there's only is two. No, there's, isn't there? no, there's a bunch. I think they've only released the first I two. I think they've released a bunch. Have they released more than two? Uh, maybe. I have a look. Anyway, I like it. I have a quick way look. Way better than it's the It's so good. <laughs> it's, it's way better. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I, we got sent an email. We did we? Yeah, we got sent an email to weeklyplanetpod at gmail uh, That's correct. Mm. Um, I can look it up on Prime while you do the email if you want. No, no, I got it. I got it right here. This is from Michael. Yeah. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the TV show from 1996. So in previous weeks we talked right. about how in the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith it's about a married couple. And neither of them knows that the other one is a. I don't agent. know. But in the, in the TV in the new TV series, the 2024 series, it's about. Uh, two characters are played by Donald Glover and Maya Erskine who are sort of myste- – like they're, they're two people with kind of mysterious checkered pasts yeah, who have agreed to work for a company that, that that require them to do high-risk kind of espionage things. And so they both know that they're spies. Yes. And I'm like, that's a fun twist. But Michael sent an email and he said, all right, boys, on the upcoming show f- shows for 2024, you mentioned the upcoming Mr. and Mrs. Smith show that was different to the movie because they they – Know that they're both spies and are working together. You won't know this. No one will. But that's the same plot as the Mr. and Mrs. Smith TV show that came out in 1996, starring Star Trek Enterprises' Scott Bakula. Oh, my. oh, you're right. All the episodes came out. Uh, the all eight of them. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. And Maria Bello. Now, initially, Maria I thought, Bello. Michael, you're fun in us here. You, you're doing a bit Michael, of fun. Michael, why are you joking to us? Why are you, doing, why are you joking around on We're us? Busy. We're, We're busy. We're too busy for your doing jokes. Doing a podcast. Because I went this is a classic prank, exactly, obviously. Because I went to the Mr. and Mrs. Smith Wikipedia page, the, the 2024 TV series. The Smithopedia. And it said Mr. and Smithopedia. And it said oh, based on the movie. And so I clicked through the movie and it said written a script written by Simon Kinberg. There's no reference on either page to this TV series, That's even so though weird. it's and so I went to IMDB and I looked it up and it, it does exist. But they've they've like scrubbed every mention of it from the Why? both versions. So I don't the know. movie is the movie based on the whatever? I don't know, but the TV series, this TV series, is based seems on the to be movie, based yeah. more on the the original TV series because in this in the in the old version they work for the factory and in this they work for the company. Or the company, and it's uh, but anyway. Oh my it's, god, it's Timothy Olyphant's in that series. Yeah, it's his, like his first role or something. Fuck you now. No, he was in Scream Two, Mason. After this, how oh, was he? All right. <laughs> anyway, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith is really good. The TV yeah. series, I think it's super fun. I think the, the two leads are very good. I think they've got a good chemistry. It's not like, again, it's not Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, ooh, a big sexy so energy. So sexy at each but other. It's, you know, it's, it's, got that, it's got a good rom-com energy, I think, like a low-key yeah. rom-com energy to it. Their, uh, their bants is good. They've got good bants. They've got good bants. Uh, the action is solid and fun, and it's like it's got good it, – it does feel like a good episodic adventure because they have to go on a mission each week mm. kind of thing. 
Uh, it's a bit surreal.ist It is a little bit. I mean, it, yeah. Also produced by and created by Donald Glover. Yeah. So in the style of Atlanta, it's a little bit odd. Mm. It's got an odd energy to it, which but I think is very good. Weird vibes. Weird vibes. Mm. Uh, and it's uh, yeah, good. It's, it's good. Yeah, just good. Good. A lot of good guest stars. Okay. It's like it. It kind of does feel like a show from a from a previous era where you go, oh, like the love boat yeah. where every week there's a different, I don't want to do too many spoils. Please don't. Okay. Well, even the opening sequence is like, oh. Yeah. Oh. oh. That's what I said. Ooh. Um, I watched The Beekeeper. You did? I watched that last Jason week. Jason Statham. I know, I know. I know we talked about it, but yeah. I saw it. Um, what did you think of it? It's pretty good. It's pretty good, isn't it? It's better, way better than fucking <laughs> the other one I watched. The movie that cannot be named. Yeah, Argyle. Argyle yeah. yeah, that's better than that one. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's... It's ridiculous because the, the scenario ends up in the end, like, if you haven't seen it, it escalates wildly about yes, what he does. has to do. Yeah. And it's got good action sequences. Statham, like, barely talks in it, which is probably good because I, I think he's supposed to be American. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's – I just – I liked it. I just thought it was just a – it's a good watch. It's a good breezy action feel to watch. That's true, yeah. You know, it's got some good kills in it and yeah, yeah. as well, yeah. So if you have a choice at your local cinema, Cinerama Dome – Yeah. About which action movie you'll see? See, Madam Web. Oh yeah, I forgot about uh, that. February fourteenth, Valentine's Day. Time Take a date. Take Day. someone special. That's or someone right. You yeah. 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 <laughs> and don't let them know which it is until the end of the movie. And be like, surprise! You could be like, surprise! I hate you. That's why I took you to this movie. Or you could be like, oh, sorry, I really liked you, but this was a mistake that we did this. And I understand why you're breaking up with me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You are my wife, and you're breaking up with me. <laughs> Should we move it along? Yes. Let's do some letters. Let's do it. Classic one was Letters, oh Letters, we love you, some letters, they're only a day away. Hang on, here right now, we're going to do Letters. Ooh, Mark Kamode reviews Argyle. I wonder what he thinks about it. I cannot wait to listen, but he doesn't yeah. like it. No, um, I can't wait to get home and watch the rest of Argyle. Mr. Smith. No, not Argyle, <laughs> but I recorded it on my phone. <laughs> yeah, and, I then read, my... and then read book one. Yeah. That's right. I nearly bought that like months ago. That's crazy. I'm like, I should, I should give it a whirl. Never trust anything. No. Now you know. Mm. Anything right. can be good. Anyway, I'm gonna get this. But not arguing. I'm gonna get some emails. Yep. Okay. While you're doing that, uh, you can actually send an email while Mason's getting them to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. and you can also hashtag weeklyplanetpod on Twitter. And those numbers have dropped off dramatically. Maybe we're slipping. I mean, all our other numbers indicate that we're not slipping and That's it's great. just Twitter as a platform is unusable. Yeah, I think that could be it. But it's probably us. We're probably not seeing a lot of notifications, if I'm honest. Here's an email from Seth. Seth! Hey, James and Mason. First of all, thank you both so much for the great content. Wow. We, loved, happy to, we happy love to delivering content. We're happy to do it. We love delivering hot, fresh content. Every week. Dripping with extra cheese. Yep. Uh, I've been listening to you for about three years. I'm going through all your old videos. I was watching one from years ago. You mentioned The Raid 1 and 2. I absolutely love those movies. Would you ever consider doing a caravan of garbage on them or a weekly planner on your favorite martial arts movies? Yes. Yes, and we should watch them old ones I need as well. more martial arts movie watching though. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, absolutely, yeah. I should. We should watch them on like Michelle Yeoh. Totally. Like that kind of era of Hong Kong yep. action movies. Exactly. Hard-boiled, et cetera. Those are hard to get now are for they? complicated legal reasons. Oh, my because God. The, what about – can you do them in simple illegal ways? You can do it in very simple illegal ways, I think. Okay. But like if you go to like anywhere that sells DVDs or Blu-rays, you can't get like hard boiled or the the killer, like the original yeah. Hong Kong one. It's something to do I, I I read it recently, but it's something to do with when there was the big Hong Kong action boom in like the eighties and nineties, uh, a company like a real estate company started they they built a movie production studio to to do that. And then they like they leased it out. Mm. And 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 now they're just and then the rights came back to them, but now they're just like we just do real estate now. So anybody who who emails or contacts them and is like, can we license this for like American? They're like nah. distribution. They're like, we don't know what you're talking about. That's insane. We just do real estate now. Can so, we get some real estate while we're here? No. Oh. no. So what do you do? Just <laughs> deny things. Tax evasion <laughs> is what we do. <laughs> um, this is from Becky Foreman who says. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Some Australian questions as an American. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. I'm true ready. or false? Half flush toilet levers on all toilets. Yep. True. That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you using? I'm half flushing it. Mostly half flushing it. Yeah. Mostly. Sometimes, sometimes when you go to. Except a, when it's out of control. Sometimes, sometimes when you go to a public toilet, they've disabled the full flush. They have. Half flush. That's true. That's what So in doing. a way, you could say that mostly in Australia we're a half flush nation. <laughs> I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just Couple of just a bunch of turds floating about. Exactly. That won't so go away. Stop talking about the government, James. 
The government. <laughs> Second question, flags only flying on Australia Day. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, certain establishments, if you go to like an RSL or yeah, certain sure, government sure, sure. buildings, they'll have it. But mm. a lot of people don't have just flags flying or even on Australia Day. The thing about that flag is as well, it fucking sucks. It's a bad <laughs> flag. It's got the Union fucking jack on it. Mm-hmm. It sucks. I don't want to fly that flag. I don't oh. like it. All right. And also, it basically means if you see someone flying it now, the implication is that they're a big racist. Sure. Not, always, Not always, but that is what it's come yeah. to represent to a lot of people. And as we always say, it the flag should be changed to what we've always want. Everybody in Australia has always wanted it to be, which is a bum with a fist coming out of it. <laughs> I completely agree. Yeah. Just do the Southern Cross. There's oh, so yeah. many things that you could just. Yeah, because there's no negative connotation. Oh, fuck, the I Southern forgot. Cross. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right. Fine. It should just be that that blue and white uh, uh, Eureka one because there's no <laughs> negative connotations attached to that. Sure. This is all good stuff. We should basically. do a new one. Yeah, do a new one. <laughs> the bum of the fist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next one. No squirrels or squirrels in Australia? No. We've got possums. We have possums, and, but they're different to the possums in America. Yeah. Our possums are cute. Yours are monstrous. Yeah. Uh, more questions. drive throughs of many kinds aren't abundant. Um. I mean, I thought about it, and they're really like your chain restaurants, like your McDonald's, your Hungry Jack's, which is Burger King, your Red Roosters, and uh-huh. whatever. Like your fast, fast food, like the cheap stuff. But no, fast. And, and there's coffee drive throughs I think that would be the extent of it. But mm. is that that different than other places in the world? I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know either. And last question. drive through bottle shops. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, we got bottle eyes. Yeah. We got drive through bottle eyes. Uh, and last one, lemonade isn't lemon plus sugar plus water, but it's more like soda. Correct. Yes. In Australia, right. Sprite is considered lemonade. That's right. I don't think I've ever had lemon plus sugar plus water lemonade. I make it every once in a while. You make it once in a while, do you? Nice, it's good. You make it with your dumb dad? No, I don't. He's got uh, nothing to do with it. You can stay away from my lemonade. Him. Sometimes I make an Arnold Palmer. What's an Arnold Palmer? It's a traditional lemonade plus iced tea. Oh. It's very nice. And what very does nice he think of it? Day. I don't know. I don't know, Mason. It's none of his business. <laughs> I don't even know if he's still alive, Arnold Palmer. I meant iced tea. Oh. <laughs> none of his business? I don't think it's any of his business, right. quite frankly. Yeah. You got another. Anyway, thank you. Hope we answered some, but not all of your questions. Yeah, let's have a I look. Think we answered all of them. Yeah. Mm. I can do another one while you're waiting. Please do. It's from William Cote Esquire. It says. How do we get Mr. Sunday Movies and Wikipedia Brown to travel to Orlando to experience the Dark Universe IRL in 2025? Especially since they revived the universe name specifically for theme parks and everything. Hashtag yeah. WeBlanetPod. You probably saw this. I did. Big theme park announcement. It was mm-hmm. like Mario World and fucking Harry Potter, whatever. Yeah. And then they just casually snuck in the Dark the Universe. The Dark Universe, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're probably like this – Trademark is going to expire unless we use it. That's right. So Let's make a park that then no one anybody wants. could have a dark universe. Mm-hmm. Maybe some science nerds could have it. Oh my god! You know, absolutely a museum or something. Yuck. Yeah, maybe one day. Mm-hmm. I'd love to visit the dark universe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Perilous. <laughs> yeah. You know, and dark Spooky. also, etc. Yeah, oh yeah. no, there's a Dracula. Yeah. What's he about? How's yeah. he out here? He's friends with Russell Crowe. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> They never cast Dracula, did they? Or did they? Who was Dracula? Were they getting to it? Because there's that cast photo where it's like Tom Cruise, yep. fucking Russell Crowe, whatever. Yeah. Bring it up real quick. All right. Bring up Dark Universe cast photo. In the meantime, here's an email from Douglas. A yep. cursed birthday gift. Hello from Scotland. Been listening to the podcast for the past couple of years and it's kept me going through long commutes and not knowing what I'm doing with my life. And although my commute is much shorter, I still don't know what I'm doing. My lovely partner, Abby, has heard me yammer on about the two Australian boys for so long now that for my birthday this year, decided to create, in her own words, a cursed poster for my work desk. Oh, my God. See picture attached. I very much love it and think it works well with the chaotic vibe that the show gives off. If it isn't too much to ask, would you be able to enthusiastically wish Abby a happy 25th birthday and myself a much less enthused 26th birthday as her birthdays are only a week apart? Oh. And I'm currently sneakily prepping for Abby's surprise trip away this weekend. Oh, congratulations. Spoilers. Oh, no. Uh, looking forward to more episodes of Dogs Bursting In, Fizzy Drinks Being Too Loud, and James's <laughs> rants about the rich and powerful. And I suppose comic book movie stuff too. And here is the uh, – here it is. Picture of the Dark Universe. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a little montage, a little collage rather. It's all us many times. It's all us. It says James and Mesa in a sort of gothic font of the Weekly Planet. Uh, we're, we're looking our best. We certainly are. Just a lot of us, and I think that's beautiful. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. Thank you so much. You're Can welcome. we have that? Yeah, if you could send it to us. Yeah, we'd love that. Yeah, yeah. Send it to Australia. 
We'll get it. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it. Um, so Russell Crowe... Send it to a Dan Murphy's bottle shop. And we'll just drive through and we'll pick <laughs> it up. <laughs> so Russell Crowe was Jekyll. Tom Cruise was the mummy. Sophia Batola was also we the mummy. We just mentioned her. I know. Uh, Johnny Depp... She's the knife legs lady. ...was... Invisible Man, I want to say, and Happy oh, Birthday. Oh, I'm bloody, I'm bloody glad about, pretty bloody glad about that. Get out and see his bloody scarves and his rings. Happy Birthday, Frankenstein, mate. Okay, maybe. so no Dracula. I don't know. It could be. Yeah. It really could be. I don't know a lot. Yeah, it's not about what you know. It's who you know. I mean, it'd be Luke Evans, right? They'd say he's still alive. It's Dracula, run unless it. that was because it's also very difficult to sort of pass which ones were part of the dark universe and which ones were just. Well, you can't stop us making a Dracula movie, That's so we're right. just going to do it. And it's not we're going to we're going to ride off the high of the, the dark universe. We're going to get on on that, you know. Oh, here we go. So Johnny Depp was Invisible Man, and Javier Bardem. You made this mistake, but he's actually Frankenstein's monster, not Frankenstein oh, the scientist. And, you know, the real monster is you, a pedant. It's <laughs> the real monster. Is that it? Uh, I'm going to find one more email, and you're going to love it. Okay. Oh, speaking speaking of Melbourne, oh it's from God. Jade. Uh, hello, tram driver and the other guy. That's us. Hello. Emailing from Manchester, brackets mm. England. We know. We know. We know. We know. My housemate is moving to Melbourne very soon, leaving me heartbroken and homeless. I want to get her some kind of gift card or experience to enjoy when she gets there. Oh. Do you have any recommendations for places I can try to get a gift card for? Wine, booze, Dan and food, Murphy's. Dan Murphy's. Not sponsored. <laughs> Not sponsored. But they have probably some good. She's going to need that Dan Murphy's gift card. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. if she's going to survive the outback of Melbourne. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to survive the our flag, the fist with a bum coming out of it or whatever. Yeah. I wonder <laughs> if you can get a, a, a gift card that's just for the Bell Street McDonald's. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that would be pretty good. Yeah. Um, you want to go there at night? You want to get punched? Yeah. It's the perfect place. Just Jeans voucher? Just Jeans. Just Jeans. What about a Jeans West? You get a Jeans what West voucher. What about Tarot Cash? You get a Tarot Cash voucher. <laughs> you, get a, um, you get a Sanity voucher. Oh, my CD. God. Want to buy a CD? Get a sanity voucher. You want to buy a CD? Yeah. You want to buy a CD? You, buy a, you could get a um, you get a voucher for one of those places where they throw axes. Oh yeah, yeah pretty pretty good. Axe throwers are us. Yeah, are us. You get a voucher for some studio time at Stupid Old Studios. That's, That's probably not a bad better. idea. Yeah. Get yeah. Evan Munro Smith to build you a set. <laughs> He'll do it. On his voucher. He'll do it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh it's a great question. Is that everything? I don't know. What's a what's a place you could eat? It's good in Melbourne. Oh, like what's a nice restaurant, hey? Oh, somewhere in Crown? Yeah, no. They've got nice restaurants Fucking in Crown. Crown sucks. I know. Um, they have good restaurants. What's that good Japanese place I went to recently, Mason? I don't know. Super Normal? Did you go to Super Normal? Been to Super Normal. That's a nice restaurant. I went there with Hollywood Pete recently as well. Oh. Yeah. It was my invite. I told you. You didn't want to come. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. You said, I do not want to see that man. That's I right. I believe you said. I did say that. <laughs> it's called Yakimono. Ah, uh, it's a great Japanese restaurant. All right, bit of fusion going on there. And if you like, like why Jap? If you like Dragon Ball Z, exactly. If you like why a uh, Japanese restaurant, can't you maybe give us some ideas for an Australian? Re- we don't have any. No, no, we don't. We don't do that. No, that doesn't. That's Australian it. food is just called all the other food from other parts of the world. Mm-hmm. It's just here. It's just here. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Mason, before you wrap up the show, I just want to give a shout out to Gabriel Tice Bruton, who you might know. I know him. Yeah, I know you know him. As the person who wrote the original theme song for the show based on the flippin' thing that you said. That's right. He was, uh, I don't know if he was the first. That flippin' thing that yeah. I said. But he said, he was, I even found the email. Uh, I went and looked through it from oh, 2013. Yeah. Wow. We needed a theme song and he sent it and he's hung around inexplicably. <laughs> I really appreciate Still it. Still listens. So I reached out right. the other day. I'm like, listen, I'm going to change the theme song. Can you help us out? And he wrote a new version of the theme song. Uh-huh. But I just, I'm not sure whether I want to go away from the original one as of yet. I understand. So that's why it was shortened up top. I don't know what we're going to do. Mm. Uh, it'll play, the new one will play at the end of the show. Oh, the yeah. other reason is because it's slightly different, I don't want people to get mad at him. Absolutely. Uh, for making yeah. something that's slightly different. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. So we might, we might change it at some point. We might not. I might just go back to the original. I don't know. I feel like, James, that this is the, the, the biggest point of contention in your entire life. I think you're right. It's been been hanging. It's been in the back of a couple for of years, years of this. Hasn't years it? of this. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to shout out uh, his band, The Valacors. Uh, his music Ooh. is available on all the platforms: YouTube, Spotify. Um, I think it's on Apple Music as well. So just bloody yeah, uh, YouTube Music, Apple Music. Yeah, absolutely. So just wanted to say a uh, huge shout out for the new song, but also the song that everybody's been hearing every week. That's right. If you've been listening for the near eleven oh, years, not you, because you don't listen to this show. But uh, but you're in it, and that's cool. <laughs> So, yeah, check him out, uh, the V-E-L-L-I-C-H-O-R-S, and just 
What a great contribution to the show. I love it. Because I could never make a song. And I don't plan on. Should I make a you song? You could make a song. I'll make a song. You could do it in your with your meeps and moops. I could do it. I can meep and moop my way into yeah. it, couldn't I? You've done video editing. It's not, it's not that dissimilar. They're pretty different. You could do you could record like a bunch of mouth noises and then you could move them around. Yeah. Like that? You, you got a song going. Okay. <laughs> All right, what are we doing? Folks, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. We absolutely appreciate it. We love that you're here. Listen to our bloody nonsense. We love it. That's right. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for telling your friends about the podcast. Thank you for leaving a five-star review on your podcast catcher of choice in app. If you do so, you might be one of the lucky ones. That's right. Who Mr. James reads out on the podcast. Like Luke Pearlberger gave us five stars and Great said, name, first of all. I know, best comic book movie podcast out there. A Pearl it, Burger? Can you mm-hmm, imagine? Crunchy. Every day. <laughs> can you imagine... Orm, the king of the seas, eating a pearl burger. Yes. Yeah. Every day I fear this da- the day the podcast ends. Could. Yeah, I mean, no plans, could. but it could. That's right. One of us could die. A what? Um, and then this one's from Dude O. Uh, who said, uh, five stars. I listened to this podcast while doing illegal street racing. Ten out of ten, five stars. That's, that's sick. Nice. That that's sick. cool. That's sick, actually. That's really sick. I hope it's illegal street racing on bicycles, though. Oh. Or big penny farthings or oh such. Oh, my God. Is that illegal? Should be. In some regions, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. Uh, i tell you this, folks. Why I'll the fuck you. are those bikes so tall? Who thought that was a good so idea? So you can be a big, tall man with a big, tall hat. That's so t- – just relax. Just they relax on that. Yeah, it's weird. That, it's weird. That <laughs> Why'd original, you go that big? Why the original design is big, big wheel at the front. Yeah. I don't know, man. You want big wheel at the back? Yeah, kind of. Mm. It'll be like a dragster. How'd you even park that anywhere? You don't. You throw it in the river. Oh, okay. That makes you sense. You throw it in the Thames. <laughs> That's why the water's so rusty. That makes sense. Folks, uh, i tell you this much. Oh, yeah? Uh, I can do this. I've done it so many times. He's not doing it. He's freezing up. I'm not freezing up. I'm freezing freewheeling. Season. I'm freewheeling. He's I'm not riffing. freewheeling. I'm riffing, man, and this is cool, He's I think. Fatiguing. I can just, I'll, I'll just oh, go the straight sweat, into Oh, the it. sweat on his brow. Oh, God. <laughs> Folks. If you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod Whoa. at gmail.com. You can go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. You can go to, the, go to the Weekly Planet subreddit and Discord for fun at civil chats about podcasts and pop culture. Yeah, man. Thank you to Amazing Fidel and Sarabi for moderating over there. Oh, my God. Also, thanks to our friend Rob Collins who edits this podcast and makes all sorts of videos and keeps you up to date on all things the Weekly Planet. You can follow him. On Twitter at Rob Co- at Raw Collins rather, and at the Weekly Planet. You can follow me on Twitter at Wikipedia Brown and on Instagram at Nick Maso. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. everywhere. If you want to support the show, you go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies, chuck in a buck or an amount. You wouldn't miss it for this bit. I wouldn't That's miss it. That's how we do it. Yeah. Would you miss it? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love having money. It's good, isn't it? From people. But only if they want to. Then yeah. otherwise I don't want it. Okay. Correct? Yes. So if, you, if you've been contributing for years and you've decided you don't want us to have that money, let us know. We'll refund it. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll definitely get back to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or you can go to bigsandwich.co, yep. sign up for nine US dollars per month, bonus podcast, movie commentaries, early videos, video game let's plays, all sorts of stuff. Uh, no plans for next week, is there? In terms of the show, because the next week is spam. Oh, yeah, we could do... Uh, I mean, we could do Mr. and Mrs. Smith. That's There's true. A... We could do uh, the dry too. This time it's pretty wet. Oh, yeah. That's pretty our... wet dry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I do want to read pretty... Uh, I've read it, actually. Claire interviewed the author. Oh. It's delightful. Um, and I like the... Eric movies. Banner, the Eric author. Banner, no, Mason. Oh, he didn't write the book. Huh. What was her name? So you're saying he couldn't write a book if he tried? Nah, no fucking way. The creator of Poida. Nah. Legendary Australian character Poida. No. Jane Harper. Nice. No, he couldn't write a book. Wow. I'm issuing the challenge. Wow. Do you think we could get a uh, the, the person who was after a gift voucher for Melbourne, maybe a gift voucher for Eric Banner on Cameo? Oh. He could do Poiter. He could say, welcome to, welcome to Melbourne. <laughs> and he'd have a tinny. He wouldn't be on Cameo. I'm no, going to check. No, that's true. He wouldn't be. No. Nah. No, I think he's too serious now. Yeah. Sometimes they'll get like, they'll do a week of like charity or whatever. Uh-huh. And they'll get some special celebrities. That's true. To maybe pop okay. in. Okay. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Anyways, we're really going. That's true. Uh, thank you to the Brute. That's Gabriel Tice Bruton. Damn. And the Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. Damn. And if you want a T-shirt, you go to tpublic.com. You search for The Weekly Planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's right. There's YouTubers on Cameo. I could go on Cameo. It's true. Look at this in, guy. In the state you're in right now. Yeah, the, look at these all these people. I'm like, am I more or less famous than any of these people? I don't no, know. I mean like. Oh, the state I'm in now? No. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, am I famous? I don't know. I can't tell if I'm. More or less famous than any of these people. Somebody pays 50 bucks for a cameo from you and you're just like, oh, it's so hot. <laughs> it's so hot here, Melbourne. 
<laughs> some bloody hoss. I don't want to be one of those guys that's like, oh, I don't recognize any of these people or whatever. And I don't mean, I just, I'm just, I'm not, I don't know what the fuck is happening anywhere. So <laughs> it's not my fault though, is it? Mm. All right. Thanks everyone. Grab that jam. You guys will see you next week for a thing. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Yeah.